Our birthday story begins in the little town of Bethlehem. Mary and Joseph had been traveling for many days, and their feet were tired. When they got to Bethlehem, they needed a place to rest. Every place they stopped and asked for a place to rest, the people said the same thing. Mary and Joseph kept looking and looking. Finally, someone told them that there was a place for them to stay. God made sure that Mary and Joseph had a nice dry barn for a place to stay that night. While they were staying in the barn, baby Jesus was born. Whenever a baby is born, we celebrate with a party. And when the baby was born is the savior of the world, we've got even more to celebrate. Mary and Joseph knew there would be lots of people coming by to help celebrate this birthday. To get ready for all the excitement, they decided it would be best for the baby, Jesus, to take a little nap. So Mary and Joseph covered Jesus up with a blanket, and their friends quietly said goodbye. birthday we send out invitations to invite people to come and celebrate there were some shepherds taking care of their sheep in the field close to where Jesus had been born God sent angels to deliver a special invitation check out the invitation this invitation was good news for the shepherds they had been invited to come and meet God's gift of love to the world Jesus the newborn Savior The shepherds left their sheep in the field and ran to Bethlehem to celebrate the Savior's birth. When they got to the barn, the shepherds wanted to do something special for Mary and Joseph. Some of them swept and cleaned the barn. The rest of the shepherds put up decorations. Then they waved goodbye and ran to tell everybody in the town about Jesus.
What about presents? Whenever somebody has a birthday, we celebrate giving presents. Will anybody remember to bring Jesus a present? The wise man. The wise man. You're right. The wise men had heard that Jesus had a birthday. They had presents to give Jesus, and they knew they would travel many days to give them presents. The only way they could find the birthday boy was to follow a star, a special star God had given them to follow. If the star went over the hill, the wise men went over the hill. If the star went around in a circle, the wise men went around in a circle. Wherever the star went, the wise men followed. Then one day the star stopped at a place where Jesus was staying, and the wise men stopped too. Each of the wise men brought a special present. One of the wise men brought presents of gold, frankincense, and myrrh for Jesus. Another brought presents of food and water for the animals in the barn. The last wise man brought a birthday cake. When the wise men saw baby, the baby lying in the manger, they knelt down and worshipped Jesus. They had left to tell others that Jesus Christ had been born. presents at Christmas. Some of us do a little extra work to help someone out at Christmas. Some of us sing songs and ring bells at Christmas. Whatever we do, we're doing something special to celebrate that Jesus has a birthday. And that's what Christmas is all about. Celebrating the birthday of God's gift to all of us, Jesus.
Thank you so much for coming out and watching them. Every year I stress, every year, you can ask my husband, every year I come home the week before the service or before the Christmas play and I stress out. And every year they prove me wrong. Just like yes, yesterday, we had kids rolling around on the stage. Um, we had kids falling off the back of the risers. We had kids crying. Even this morning we did, but every single year they proved me wrong. Let's give them another round of applause. Just a quick announcement, there will be no children's church today, and the, the little preschool class of two to four, five years old, you do have class if you want to send the two to five-year-olds only. Some of the, most of the kids will be going back into that room so they don't have to sit and listen to me speak. <laughs> Whether or not you like it, whether you prepared or not, the Christmas season is upon us. I found a study that I thought was pretty amusing, and, and when I think of my wonderful spouse, I am reminded of how true this story in this study actually is. A re- according to a report, a British psychologist, David Lewis, found proof that shopping is definitely more hazardous to men than women. <laughs> Testing male volunteers ages 22 to 79, by sending them out Christmas shopping on Black Friday, he recorded blood pressure rates in the men that you would expect to see in a fighter pilot going into combat. In the same test, only one in four women showed any significant signs of stress, and none of those came close to the stress level of a male their age. Here's another story you may may find amusing. A few days before Christmas, two men in Florida decided to go sailing while their wives went Christmas shopping. While the men were out sailing, a terrible storm arose, and they had difficulty keeping their boat under control. As they maneuvered their way back to their land, their boat got grounded on a sandbar. They had to jump overboard, had to push with all their might, trying to get their boat into deeper water, and as they did, The wind was blowing terribly, the waves were rushing upon them, they were soaking wet and knee deep in mud. And one of the men turned to the other man and said, at least this is better than Christmas shopping. (laughs) This week as I was preparing for this day, making sure three kids who were leading worship knew their songs, 22 preschool and pre-kinders acted appropriately on stage during their Christmas play and it went on without a hitch my sermon, and carrying on within the day-to-day operation of running a preschool, you can only imagine the amount of pressure and stress I was under. The only thing I knew I did not have to worry about was Rachel singing, because as you could hear, she was amazing. I stopped to talk to a longtime friend in the breezeway and a parent of a pre-kinder, and she reminded me, Jackie, you are there to give the message. God is there to move people. God is the one in control. Trust him. What an amazing thing to hear. Thank you, Melissa. This week, I went around the preschool and I asked several kids, what is Christmas about? Why do we even celebrate Christmas? A two-year-old yelled happily, Jesus! Answer to everything. A three-year-old said, Jesus was born that day. A five-year-old stated, that was when Jesus was born. And we get presents? Why do we get presents on Jesus' birthday? Don't tell my mom that, because she won't get me any if you do. (laughs) A schoolager said, it's Jesus' birthday. He deserves the best party ever. I decided to continue the conversation with the schoolager. And I asked, why is he so important? He responded, well, he is the one that saved us. 
He is the one God sent down to die for our sins. I, dis- I was taken back by his response. He is right. We're not only celebrating the birth of Jesus. We are celebrating God giving us his son to come down and save us of our sins. What takes us away from the real meaning of Christmas? We get so caught up in the buying, the baking, the decorating, and we lose sight of what we are doing it for. We want to buy the kids the biggest and bestest gifts ever. One year, I counted, and Caden received 30 gifts. Majority of them were small, but why so many? We want to have the most lights up on the house. We want our house to smell of fresh baked cookies when friends and family arrive. And we want to fill our tables with gobs and gobs of food. We want our homes spick and span. All for what? It reminds me of a story in Luke. Luke 10, 38 through 42. Now it happened as they went that he entered a certain village, and a certain woman named Martha welcomed him into her house. And she had a sister called Mary, who also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. But Martha was distracted with much serving, and she approached him and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? Therefore, tell her to help me. And Jesus answered and said to her, Martha, you are worried and troubled about many things. But one thing is needed, and Mary has chosen that, which will not be taken away from her. Poor Martha understood what stress was, rushing around, trying to get everything ready. I mean, Jesus was in her house. Who wouldn't? Martha surely represents every person who is so worked worked up about getting everything done that needs to be done so they can enjoy Christmas. Martha got so busy serving Jesus, she forgot to spend time with him. We get so busy with our preparations for Christmas and our participation in Christmas that we forget to spend time with Jesus. But seriously, what should be the greatest season of the year, what should bring us joy and warm our hearts, instead brings us stress and heartburn and heartache and headaches and depression. The stress associated with the Christmas holidays often makes what should be the most wonderful season of the year a miserable mess. A few years ago, I heard a pastor speak on this, and one thing that has always struck in my head is the stress that plagues people at the time of the year are rooted with three basic sources, time, money, and emotions. So I decided to add a few thoughts and share a few stories. Time, how do we fit everything in? The cookie baking, the Christmas parties, the shopping, the cleaning, oh, and you can't forget the family pictures for Christmas cards to send out, which I always do, but never send out, ever. One year, our Christmas celebrations began on the 23rd. We drove to the east side, stayed the night in a hotel. On the morning of the 24th, we went to the outlets for one last shopping spree. Then at four, we went to Christmas Eve service. After that, we went to my aunt's house from four to 10. Then we did our trip to Denny's, which we take every Christmas Eve, then back to the hotel. We woke up Christmas morning, opened gifts with my family, who was also there at the hotel, then packed up and went to my sister-in-law's house for Christmas breakfast from 9 to 11. We then drove to my father-in-law's house and had Christmas there from 11 to 2. Then we drove home and had Christmas at home from 2 to 4, and at that time was rushing the kids to open up their presents so we could make it to my mother-in-law's house at 4. We stayed there from 4 to 9. The entire three days we did not stop. We did not stop to think of the reason we were even celebrating. We fill our days with an abundance of celebrating when we can't even remember the reason we are celebrating. And a lot of things that take up so much of our our time cost us money. Money. Yikes. For many Americans, the quality of Christmas is determined by the quality and quantity of gifts. This holiday season, it was reported that majority of adults plan to purchase every single item on their kids' wish list. It is also imported, Im, reported that parents will spend $422 on each child. For my family, that's almost $1,300. And on top of all of that, 26% of people are still paying off credit card debt from the prior Christmas season. How does this even make sense? We are putting ourselves under financial stress for an entire year. 
just to make sure our children have the Christmas of their dreams. Jesus received three gifts. I made up my mind last year that my kids would only receive three gifts from Sean and I. Why is it so hard for me to stick to that? I went out Black Friday, actually Thursday shopping, and I went into Walmart three times. Yeah, three times. I went to Walmart, I left. Went back to Walmart, then went to Target, then went back to Walmart. The person that I was with, it was her first Black Friday shopping experience, and she couldn't believe the reason of why I would want to go back into that dreaded store. I battled in my mind back and forth saying, they need it, then replying, no they don't, then saying, yes they do, it won't be a Christmas present, they'll use it now, they need pants, they need socks, they need underwear, who doesn't? I know we could not afford it, but it is so hard. I literally have to remind myself every time I walk into a store that the financial stress it puts on my family is not worth the three days of playing with a toy. Because we all know, they open up the gift, they play it for three days, and then it gets shoved into a toy box, which they never see again. Presents is not what Christmas is about, so do not let the stress of figuring out how to pay for them overtake the meaning of Christmas. Emotions. The emotions that go along with the holiday season can put a strain on anyone. Some grieve the loss of a loved one that once made Christmas special. My grandma always made Christmas Eve the best night. Even though there were 60 people crammed into her house for dinner and celebration, I loved it. It was something we did ever since I can remember. Not having her here and having this tradition slowly fade away rips at my heart. She always reminded me of the true meaning of Christmas. She was such a godly woman, and without her, something is lost on our Christmas Eve nights. I know others have same situations. Others also have a situation of family strain or conflict they battle with. Jesus would like nothing more for us to put our hope in him and do our part in resolving conflict this season. We start December with high expectations, but all too often, our quest for the picture-perfect day leaves us stressed. The Christmas season becomes flooded with anything but joy as we race to find the perfect gift and open our homes to family and friends. So let me close with four tips on how to make Christmas season a little less stressful, something a pastor once suggested to me. One, set realistic expectations for yourself. Martha was distracted by all the preparations that had to be made. That sure sounds like our lives sometimes. Sure sounds like my life this week. Like Martha, we get distracted by what we consider the many necessary things that we miss the part. Sure, the things Mary was, Martha was doing was important, but were they necessary? All the things that we put into Christmas season, they may be important, but are they necessary? Are they taking away the meaning of it? No one gave Martha those duties. She did it to herself. She blamed her sister, but it was her plans that were so elaborate that stressed her out. All Jesus wanted was Martha to spend time with him like Mary was. We must not get wrapped up in our preparation for Christmas that we leave no time for Christ. Choose peace over chaos. In Colossians, Paul writes, Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as members of one body, you are called to to peace, and be thankful. This cannot be more true for us today. We are called to live in peace, looking at our lives with thanks for what we have instead of complaining for what we do not have. When we let peace rule our lives, the stress of life slowly begins to fade. The chaos of the holidays is put into context and compared with the grace of God and the joyful peace he brings to our lives when we seek him. Put down the gift wrap, the cookie cutters, the mop, and the calendar, and take time to rest in God's peace. Number three, decide to do something this Christmas to make a difference. I challenge you today to do something this Christmas that your family will not forget. Start a tradition of giving. This year, the preschool is helping three families in need. 
we have a tree full of angels. And on each angel, there is a gift that some child is wanting or needing. So if we are able financially, I put that, I make sure I put that in there. If we are able financially to help a needy family, please do. Give as God gave to you. For he gave you the most precious gift of all, his son Jesus, to come down and die on the cross so that we may be free. And do it without obligation or reservation or any hidden meeting. Other ways to make a difference is to mend a coral. Tell someone that may not know it how important they are to you. Turn away wrath with a gentle answer. Forgive someone who has wronged you. And visit someone who is lonely. Have your children participate with you so that they may see the good that comes from giving. Lastly, and most importantly, importantly brings me back to what the school age so importantly reminded me of. Make the main thing the main thing. The best way to not allow stress make you a Grinch this Christmas is to remember the point of the holiday. Christmas is not a task to complete or a burden to endure. It is a celebration of the burden that Jesus carried so that we could be free from sin and death. Christmas does not only make the days Jesus was born, does not only mark the day Jesus was born, but the day God gave us his son so that we could be free. In closing, don't let the stress of making a list and checking it twice keep you from celebrating the salvation that came from Jesus. Make the main thing the main thing this season by remembering that Christmas is a celebration of God's ultimate gift of salvation. Thank you. Wow, thank you, Preacher Jackie. <laughs> oh, that was a great message. She took it already, I think. <laughs> so uh, we love this person so much. Amen? Amen? And appreciate everything that you do, Jackie. And we have something very, very special for you. And because I'm ADHD, you're going to get it this week, not today. <laughs> How's that, babe? <laughs> so if you'd like to take anything on the stage, you're welcome to. <laughs> it's okay. No, I'm sorry. We had planned many things, but it's coming. Okay. So I apologize for that. Thank you, Sean. You hold me accountable. Yeah. Um, there are a couple of things just to say that if any of you don't have a church home, you're always welcome here. And if you want to come visit once in a while when your preacher's on vacation, you're welcome. No, I'm just kidding. Thank you, though, for being here. Thank you for your support of our preschool. Thank you for your prayers. And we want to have prayer for Jackie and for the staff. If any of the teachers, I'm sure they're with the kids. But if there are kids, let's give them a thank you offering. If there are teachers. So I'd like to ask the, the pastors who are here in the church. Would Juan and Becky come down? Denise, uh, is Abwe or Celestan here? Can you please come? I know Pastor Ben left uh, to go be with Bonnie's mom, who's grieving today. Uh, are the Wingates here? I don't think, I think Kay is not feeling well. Let's keep her in prayer. There's Pastor Abwe. Come on down and we're going to pray. Sean, would you come up? We want to have a special prayer of thanksgiving and for God's blessing on this couple and the staff and uh, on the students and all of you guys that are raising beautiful children who gave us such a blessing. Oh, the Wingates. Oh, praise the Lord. This is an answer to prayer. Good to see you, Kay. Hey, Bob. Thanks, Doc. Are there, is there anyone else that wants to come down to pray? Wave your hand. Okay. I'm going to ask Abwe to pray in Swahili and then uh, Pastor Juan to pray in the Lord's other heavenly language. And we have a United Nations around here. It's beautiful. And then I'll close. Asante Bwana Yesu tumbele zako tena mchana wa leo. Tunakaribia kumbukumbu ya kuzaliwa kwako. Acha Roho Mtakatifu Mwalimu Mkuu atufunze lile ambalo anaandaa kwa mwaka huu. Mwaka huu uwe mwaka wa mafanikio kwetu. Acha yakale yote yatoweke tu viumbe vipya kama vile maandishi yanavyosema yakale yatoweke na tuzaliwa upya. Endelea nasi katika wiki yote mzima. Endelea nasi katika mwaka wote mzima. 
ili utu wetu wa zamani upotee na utu wa sasa uingie katika kila mmoja wetu. Wewe ni yule jana anata milele na kwa Mungu, au tabadilika kamwe ni katika jina la Yesu aliyemwamba na mwokozi wetu tukiomba. Amen. Father, we just bless this couple and we just ask you that your blessing will be in their life and ministry. Pedimos Dios en el nombre de Jesús que tu bendición esté sobre ellos, sobre el ministerio que ellos tienen y que bendigas cada una de las familias, Señor, en el nombre de Jesús. Thank you, Lord, for Sean and Jackie. Thank you for Jackie's leadership at the school. Father, for her compassion and her kindness, for her academic excellence, Lord, for her management skills, for her heart that comes through in everything that she does. As she wants these children to know you as their best friend now and in eternity. And Father, we just ask that you'll continue to bless the staff and each of the kids and all of the parents and grandparents and, and extended family. Father, may your spirit be felt in the preschool every single day. May people know in a vibrant way how much your love is there for each one of them. And Father, we thank you now for your anointing on Jackie and on Sean. Bless them and their family. And may they feel our love and know your love for them and the appreciation for their ministry. And I pray for everyone gathered now, Lord, and for our church family at large and for your church all over the world, that we will be filled with the Spirit, that we will feast on your Word, Lord, that we will spend time doing those moments that open our hearts to your touch. And Father, may we rely on your grace and be filled with your joy and the peace that passes understanding, because Christ has come, and he is alive in us and in this world. And we praise you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. God bless you. <laughs> we love you. Have a wonderful rest of the day and a beautiful Christmas season. <laughs>